Hello there, Geminis. Welcome to your tarot reading. Um, I feel like you're literally stepping into a portal to, you know, the next phase of your life from which you can't really backtrack. And um, I also feel for many of you, too much has been done, too much has been said. And so the idea of going back, rescinding our words, rescinding our actions, that is not something that you can do anymore. So I feel like a new evolutionary phase in your life is beginning. And um, I feel like, you know, depending on which side of the coin you're in, that can be very exciting or that can also be, it's exciting because, you know, it's, it's conclusive. And I feel like with you, you like to have, you know, that set of conclusion, that sense of closure. And so moving forward, it can be very exciting. It can be very empowering. But then for others of you who are still a little bit mired in regrets, who are not ready yet, and you might be, you know, digging your heels in, trying to go back to a situation, trying to fix things from the past, I feel like that gateway is not open for you anymore. So in a way, it can feel a little bit um, scary. And I do sense some regrets and some anxiousness coming through from your end about uncertainty, you know, as you step into the new phase. Okay. So I feel like this month overall, it is a gateway, a major life changer type of a month for many of you. Um, I'm sensing in the work environment, they're saying a lot of gifts coming through from other people. So in work is not just, um, financial compensation that you're getting i feel like people are coming to you to kind of like give you you know all making offers making uh giving you things to try giving you things you know to curry favors with you giving you physical tangible items in in, in terms of payment as well um, and I also feel like you're going to be meeting with a lot of people who really like you, who really, you know, like they, they, they really adore you. They really look up to you. And I feel like there are a lot of income generating opportunities available as well. I feel like some of you might have started new gigs, like might have started a new job, might have signed contracts for a new position. If that is the case, I feel like you're exactly where you, you're meant to be because this new wave of energy is going to bring about a lot of success and it's going to bring, you know, positive, high vibrational people into the picture for you in the future. For those of you who are still in a current job, you haven't shifted work yet. I'm sensing that you're getting a little bit frustrated and you're just like hoping, praying for things to get better. You're hoping for, you're hoping like, people would start to see people would start to come around you're hoping to do you know like i feel like you might be somebody that has a lot of um has a higher up position and so you might be doing a lot of damage control and i'm also feeling like it's just this element about you know i wish things were different i wish things would get better when is it going to get better what can i do right now so feeling a little bit trepidatious about it's almost like every day something new comes into the picture and you're kind of like constantly riding this emotional roller coaster ups and down and you're just like when is it going to smooth itself out when is it going to stop being this roller coaster when are things going to stabilize and so that can be very debilitating as an air sign i feel like it gets to you mentally it does keep you up at night and it create a lot of anxieties as well where you might not know who to trust you might not know if other people are you know really if they really have your back so that's just something i'm sensing in the work environment that is um, problematic for just a few of you especially for those who are in a position of authority like if you're managing other people and they're not getting along or if you are in a supervisory um, position and things have not been going too well, okay? So I feel as if, I feel as, as if many of you are thinking about major, major career change, okay? Um, like whatever is not working, you feel like, you know what, I wanna, I'd rather do something else. I'd rather um, learn new skills. I'd rather be in an environment that is not so turbulent. So I feel like you're looking for a lot more stability coming in for this month. You're looking to repose, you're looking to relax, and you're looking to just have a little bit of a break, I feel. Have a little bit of a break from just the, the excitement 
last month i feel was quite exciting a lot of things were happening for you in love relationships as well as work in your career sector a lot of you were thrust into the public um, limelight you know you you might have had opportunities to share something you created you might have you know connected with a lot of new audience a lot of new people and so last month was very very it was very fast paced very dynamic there were a lot of people to see a lot of things to do and so this month it's um telling you to kind of ease up a little bit you know take care of things that matter take care of the people that matter don't wear yourself out running from place to place so i feel like you're looking for a little bit more rest or a little bit more restitution <clears throat> and also relaxation and you're 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 also in great need of needing to take care of yourself okay i mentioned this energy for i believe leo they're running themselves ragged and i feel like for you guys as well it's time to relax a little bit this is a, a month where people need to slow down and take stock of a few things and for you cancer i'm sorry capricorn you capricorn and leos you you all need to slow down a little bit so um let's go into this reading here so first of all many 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 of you are shifting work into like a different avenue you are looking around for other options scoping around for other options what i'm feeling is this this is a main job. This is kind of like a financial offer, a contract, something that is like nine to five. OK, usually when it's like the uh, page of pentacles, knight of pentacles, even the queen of pentacles and also the king of pentacles, it's usually a work offer and work in a very, you know, um, predictable in a very normal manner. It's like a regular nine to five job where you have other people that you're answering to. You have a supervisor above you, you know, like the standard work environment. I feel like you have a job offer or you have something in the works where the income is not that great. You're not there because of the, the work. You're there because of the work. You're not there so much because of the financial windfall that you're getting from the job. And so it's like a, a dwindling um, avenue for you to get all your financial needs met. So I feel like many of you have a job. It pays well, you know, it pays okay and you're okay doing it. But you are really thinking about how you can expand into having, creating another revenue stream. How can you make your talents, your creativity work for you? How can you branch out and have two jobs and manage both of these two jobs successfully? And I feel like your ambitions, your skills are taking you to a different path. This is a card greatly about creativity. It's somebody with a lot of creative talents. They, and you know, Gemini's, you have a lot of creativity. Many of you have multiple talents. And because you're so talented across the board, it's like, you know, the um, jack of all trades. And as a result of it, it's really hard for you to hone in on one particular thing that you want to cultivate the skills in, that you want to make a lifelong career. So many of you, needless to say, I feel like many of you have already have like multiple side gigs, multiple jobs, multiple professions that you're looking at, multiple degrees, multiple certificates, multiple diplomas. So it's like you're very well-rounded and very, very creative. So you're hoping to turn some type of a creative um, at like a creative avenue or a creative job that you're doing on the side and you're hoping to be fully self-employed and or self-sufficient for the long run so this gateway month i feel like what it does is that it forces you to think about long term where do i want to be 10 years from now when i retire how much money will I save up? So I feel like you are being a lot more like a Virgo where you sit down, itemize how much you're going to be making every year, how much is going towards taxes, how much is going towards retirement, how much is going towards, you know, the IRA, um, your IRA accounts, savings account, bank account, pension, all of these things. Um, you're thinking about self-employment because this card is, you know, somebody that is making their money work for them, investment opportunities diversifying your portfolios, um, hiring an investment agent, for example, an investor to help you manage your investment portfolio and turning a revenue stream or turning a creative outlet or creative skill that you have into self-employment opportunities that will set you up really well 
for long-term you know financial stability we're talking like into retirement age many of you even if you're young i feel like this is a major shake-up type of a year where you have kind of confronted issues with where can i you know like i need to get serious where can i apply my skills the best where can i find the most emotional satisfaction in the work that i'm doing where do my skills match up exactly with the type of work that you know can give me that financial stability so i feel like you're not you know you're you're you have gone through and actually i feel like you had to get your head in the game you had to get serious you might have gone through some financial hardships i feel like a lot of you are very serious minded about okay i can't really bum around anymore i'm getting older i'm get i'm not getting any younger my health my physical stamina is somewhat diminishing. I need to be very serious about where I need to retire, what, where I'm going to live. And realistically, I need to get myself into a job that will allow me to have, you know, the financial stability that I, I want. And so I feel like you had a job and the job itself, you know, it might not pay entirely well, but I feel like it's stable and you're not 100% happy with it you feel like you could do more and so that's why you're diversifying into you know second uh, sources of income diversifying your portfolio diversifying into possibly holding down two jobs so that you can achieve this um, financial abundance um i feel for many of you some of the areas that you definitely should look into this is a card here that indicates some type of a healing profession, okay? This is a healer. This is somebody who has like shamanistic tendencies, who is also quite possibly very, very spiritual in nature, but I also feel like it can deal heavily with modern medicine, traditional medicine, some type of a healing profession. It might not be mainstream with the star in the reverse position, but what I feel happening is um, if you are looking and you're trying to think like, okay, what else can I do to increase my income? What else should I study? What else really interests me? Look into some type of esoteric teaching. It could be psychology. It could be, you know, nursing as well. I feel like the healing profession is where you are going to be able to tap into a lot more hidden talents. You have a lot of creative skills, but I feel like, you know, a lot of the time, this is something that capricorns and i feel virgos they understand on a very deep profound level aquarius too but aquarius it, it's a little bit different so let me just talk about this i feel like capricorn and virgos they encounter blockages if they start working for themselves so that means they're you know very hard worker they're very talented they're very reliable but i feel like unless the work that they do there's an element of service associated with it unless they're working to better humanity in some way either through mentorship through service through self-sacrifice through you know uh getting through those rough long hour work days <clears throat> in order to help others that's where they really thrive and when they find themselves in those positions they start to feel, you know, very prosperous. All of a sudden they get promoted really fast. And then I also feel for many of them, it brings them this sense of emotional satisfaction. And so when you really love the work that you do, that's when prosperity will be magnetized towards you. So I feel like this concept is something that Virgos and um, Capricorns understand on a very deep level. But I feel for you, Gemini, and also Aquarius, also Libra, but not so much Libra, you and, and Aquarius, you tend to do things that you like. You don't really care about money, you know, like you're not a shallow, superficial and materialistic sign. And I feel like you tend to do something if you feel like, hey, that's a really interesting intellectual challenge or, hey, I wonder how that works. Let me do some digging. Let me research to understand it, to understand how it works. Unless there is an element of intellectual stimulation, curiosity, you know, like unless there's an element of that, you, you might not want to do it. And so I feel like for many of you, 
life has been about collecting new experiences, experiencing new things, seeing new things, learning new things. But in the process of collecting all of these experiences, you become, you know, like that jack of all trade and your knowledge, your skills and your expertise. With this page of swords energy is a very young energy. It's not developed knowledge. It's knowledge that needs to be strengthened and deepened and, you know, it needs to be cultivated. It's still in the very beginning stages. So you're kind of um, selling yourself short if the knowledge seems to be, you know, from a place where it doesn't have enough depth to it, where you can't really pass everything on to the other person. So um, I had a Virgo and teacher and uh, she said, you can't really, like, you don't understand something like innately you don't understand something until you can teach it so that's what i feel is happening until you can become either the queen of swords or the king of swords where you understand all the ins and out you understand all the legal channels or you know the back and forth all the loopholes all the plot holes within a specific idea or concept and you under you can anticipate questions that people are gonna ask and you can anticipate things that people are going to say to either refute or agree with a specific idea that means you don't know something in depth and as a result of that what that does is you might be around collecting experiences but when it comes when it boils down to you know having a clear deep rooted understanding of it i feel like you're you're still a little bit short here so this card heavily deals with communication. It heavily deals with, you know, our mental processes. Is it strong enough? Is it firm enough? Is the foundation established well enough so that it can sustain the test of time? Or are we just, you know, um, flipping in the wind? Are we changeable? Are we moving with the tides? And, you know, I, I believe, yeah, as a mutable sign, it's really important for you to understand that it's okay to change, but once we change too often, we start to lose our sense of identity, right? And so it's really important for you to, you know, keep this in mind. And it's important for you to try to deepen and strengthen these knowledge base, because I feel like as of this point, you pick up something and you read, read through it very briefly and you start to get bored. This is a card, once again, like boredom, not knowing something in depth, having all of these things that are God-given talents, but you find yourself kind of like, oh, what else is new? I want to find something new. So rather than making things, you know, like an intellectual discovery, there's nothing wrong with that. But I feel like in some way, we also have to think about the humanitarian, like application of our knowledge. Can we apply our knowledge to help others? Can we apply our knowledge to teach others? Can we apply our knowledge not just for the benefit of collecting knowledge, but to somehow disseminate and give back knowledge in a meaningful way? This is a card of Aquarius here, and Aquarius um, as the water bearer. They're kind of like pouring out the water of knowledge. They're trying to uh, enlighten the world. They're trying to give back knowledge to nourish and to nurture others. This might be something that you are striving for or you should strive for. But I feel like in this context, um, it deals with some type of a healing profession. And so for those of you, you might have like, a, you know, for example, a nine to five job and you're just like, I'm, I'm not fulfilled here. I'm not happy here. Where else can I go? What other side gig can I do on the side? I would urge you really think about, you know, something in the healing profession um, and take courses towards that route. And then you're going to start to feel like, uh, I don't know if, you know, traditional or modern medicine is for me, but I feel like once you get into it, you're highly, highly intuitive. You pick up when people are suffering and you have a really good heart. And so you will want to help people. And so I feel like in that environment, the reason for being, the reason for you coming to work every day, it's not so much about the money anymore. It's going to be more about who you can help, how you can help and what emotional satisfaction that brings to you. And once you get yourself to that point, I feel like that's when money is gonna be trickling in, that's when financial abundance is gonna be highly lit up for you, okay? 
So just something to think about because um, this came out earlier when I was shuffling. They mentioned like healers, healing professions. They also mentioned like going back to school possibly for these things. Um, the star card, I usually think of it as um, it's more like mental health mental health more than other things that um you know like for example the empress that might deal more with like the physical body the physical structure i feel like the star deals more with like spiritual emotional mental healing okay so maybe even doing like psychiatry sociology human development things like that so i feel for many of you major major career um shifts major reassessment when it comes to your career and trying to figure out what is the best route for me to take possibly if you are self-employed you might be thinking like oh retirement is you know down the line should i go back to a regular nine to five so that i can have the pension and the benefits and i feel like you're grappling with this issue because it does you know regular nine to five job does infringe upon your freedom your ability to come and go as you please but at the same time it is very stable and so there's some major back and forth here reassessment weighing out the pros and cons as it relates to your financial situation as it relates to income as it relates to generating money um let me just talk a little bit about these two cards okay so we have here the seven of swords and the seven of swords i mentioned this for you guys um, Gemini's um, I believe it was last month last month like the the monthly reading but anyways um, this is you know people around you that you're not really sure if you can trust they see your success and they kind of want to ride your coattails they see your success and they kind of come out of the woodwork to ask for things curry favors okay and I want you to be really careful because while you're 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 not like i i feel like a lot of gemini's in general um you kind of go through life very lightly like you tread through life very lightly and um when it comes to interacting with people if you don't like have a natural you know interest in them you don't really pay that much attention to them and so be a little bit more discerning about who you are interacting with and especially you know um i want to say like you have a lot of you you are always surrounded by people and you have a lot of things that you're focused on so your life is very vibrant it's very robust and you have a million things around you so it's difficult for you to kind of hone in on a specific person but you want to be a little bit careful of people coming out of the woodwork people trying to curry favors with you people that have bad intentions even or people that are just you know trying to take advantage of, of the situation they see like oh you're distracted you're not looking and then they they want to take things from you um so i want you to be a little bit careful and um i mentioned last month going back to that sorry i got sidetracked going back to that i feel like i mentioned for you guys to keep your ideas close to your chest and not reveal too much okay this is kind of like somebody that is like look what i've got look at all of the accomplishments look at all my achievements look at everything that's happened you know like everything that i've created everything that i've achieved and so they're telling you to be very careful with communication don't expose everything keep some things hidden because other people might you know intellectual property theft is the first thing that i do see here because it seems to me like you're self-employed you're doing something creating something making something and the idea the concept the framework might get stolen okay and i feel like this might have happened before but you want to be careful about that and we also have here the struggle to reclaim it the struggle being met with dead ends being met with a lot of accusations even being met with just negative energy um, a lot of it coming at the same time and you feel like you have to um, fight it back okay so I feel that this month it's a slow down reassess type of month we're still in the midst of mercury retrograde and that's not going to be um, you know direct in until September 5th 
But even after September 5th, two weeks after, we're still in the post shadow period. So I want you to be very careful about communication. I want you to be very careful about what you share with other people. Trust the people around you, but if you don't know them well, and if they're all of a sudden inching their way, weaving their way into your inner circle, and they have no business being there, you want to be a little bit careful. You want to, you know, this is not about being uh, um, like mistrustful, but it's more about being discerning because I do feel that many of you, you're not very cautious, okay? You might do things, you might say things like you in a very flippant manner, and then you know, months later, it comes back to haunt you and you're just like, I said that? So we want to be very clear and careful with our communication. We want to say things if they serve an immediate purpose in that situation. If not, try to hold back a little bit, okay? Because a lot of the times, Mercury in retrograde, it makes us say things that we later regret or it puts in us in situation where we have to say things. But the policy is to be smart about it. And the policy is sometimes keeping quiet, sometimes silence makes a greater impact than just, you know, noise, right? So like such as giving somebody the silent treatment, it means a lot more than if you were to constantly tell them, you did this, you did that. So I, I want you to just keep things close to your chest. And, you know, be careful about the people around you. I mentioned this for Aquarius as well, you know, theft and things like that. Like this is, um, you know, but in, it, for Aquarius, I feel like it's, it's different. It's in their house. So I feel like for you guys, just be a little bit careful, okay? Um, here's what's going on. We have here communication. I have uh, a communication of love, messages of love. Um, offers being made to you and you are keeping very very quiet you it's almost like you have you know a b c d options of love interest people coming to you and you're waiting for a different one so it's like no i don't want all these five options i want that one specific person to be the one doing that so i feel like you're not really responding to a lot of love gestures to a lot of love offers this is like freezing up when it comes to communication taking a little bit of a repose from communicating with somebody who is offering you a lot of love for others of you we have here an earth sign so this is a taurus virgo capricorn and this is somebody that you've been eyeing for some time, okay? So you're looking at them. They're distracted with other things. The nature of earth signs is they never find themselves idle. They're always focused on one thing or the next, okay? Not so much people, but like they're they're keeping their, themselves productive. So I feel like you're scoping out this person. Your The sword is turning the other way. So it feels like you're letting your guard down around this person and you're trying to figure out what are they up to? When are they going to make a move? When are they going to, you know, show me what they want? So I do feel like there might be some miscommunication here with an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn. And I also feel that this is a person that is still struggling with their financial foundation. And so if you're dealing with them for this month, let them get their life back on track because when earth signs you know earth is very foundational when their financial foundation is not stable that's when they 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 want to be the workaholic they're going to be they're going to disappear they're going to do you know they're going to pull overtime they're going to sleep at the office and then when they're financially feeling unstable they don't go out at all they don't want to spend the money that they might not have and they also struggle really hard with self-esteem because, you know, the pentacle suit is greatly tied in with the earth sign self-esteem. So I feel that you're dealing with somebody, they, you might approach a situation differently than, you know, they would. But understanding where they're coming from, giving them a little bit of leeway and especially being, you know, understanding more than anything, it's going to be very crucial. Okay, so that's what I have for you guys. I hope the reading is helpful. Um, please, please, please be cautious with communication. And um, if you are self-employed or if you are, well, whatever it, the situation might be, um, if you, I mentioned this for Leo, I believe last month, 
And if you have some Leo in you, um, try to watch the reading for last month and see if that resonates with you for Leo last month. Um, I feel like if you're working and somebody tells you, oh, I, I want to hire you for your services, but I can't afford to pay you. And after the service is already rendered, and then they're like, oh, why don't I give you this crate of, you know, um, caviar? Why don't I give you this crate of really good wine? And you're like, okay, be careful about payment and compensation. Make sure that terms are clearly spell spelled out. Make sure that the service is rendered exactly the way that it's stipulated based on the contract. So that means don't take other forms of payments. Make sure that, you know, you calibrate and you assess what your services are worth and you don't compromise on that because I feel like some people are coming in, taking advantage of the situation, trying to swap you for services when it's worth a lot more, okay? It's nice to help people, but I do feel some people are taking advantage of it or they're slipping under something under your hands. You know, they're like, here, I want you to do this and here's, you know, my present to you. So I feel like there's a lot of underhanded types of tactics, gifts with strings attached. So be careful. So um, Gemini's, let's see what's going on in store for you. Love, relationships, and romance. I feel like, I feel like saying what you mean and meaning what you say and not having to, you know, backtrack and reassess and kind of like doubt yourself whether or not you made the right choice, whether or not you did the, the best to your capabilities. That is really important, okay? So it, it's almost like approaching life with a lot more purpose with the intention that we do the best to our capabilities and don't question it and especially don't bring our actions up for doubt and re-examination. So, you know, be very deliberate as you go through relationship challenges for this month. So the first thing that I'm feeling here, let's talk about the past. We have here the Queen of Wands and the Ten of Wands. This is a fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo, that you were heavily involved with. And this can be male or female. This is a person that is very, um, like, generally, they are very, very generous. They're very loving, very caring, very nurturing. And in some way, they can be a little bit, like, the relationship can feel a little bit claustrophobic. It's almost like um, they're so... I feel like they, they love so much that they can be a little bit stifling, they can be a little bit controlling, and they can even, um, it just feels a little bit claustrophobic to me if you guys are dealing with this type of energy. It's a loving person, it's a great person, big heart, you understand that, but the relationship feels as if it's a little bit stifling for many of you. I also feel as if, if you were involved with this person in the past, they felt like they did a lot to maintain the relationship. They felt like with the Ten of Wands, they felt like the relationship was a little bit burdensome. There was so much effort and so much work put in from their end, and they felt like they might have gotten the short end of the stick. For others of you, this is a family type of situation. You might have shared children with another person. The relationship became too stifling, too difficult. And so you're picking up the pieces of your life and you have moved past this person. They are now in your past. Bringing us to the present situation, we have here the Four of Swords. And the Four of Swords is, this is like a kind of like stoppage in communication. Um, having a lot of love, she's holding her heart out in her hands. Having a lot of love, waiting for the right person, hoping, praying that the situation will get better for you. I feel like many of you have been single for a little bit of time. You are still trying to manifest the right relationship partner. You're still trying to manifest that perfect person. But with the Nine of Swords in the reverse, it's like the opposite of wish fulfillment. It's like having a lot of options, but none of them are really panning out the way that you'd hope. And I also feel for many of you who might have had children, who have children, or might have dealt with somebody who had children, I feel like the burdens of parenting 
really interfere and got in the way of the relationship. So it could be like co-parenting, trying to um, be a new parent to a child that belongs to your lover, trying to play the maternal or the paternal role and trying to discipline the child when you feel like it's not really my responsibility or the other partner feels like it's not really my place. So I feel like parenting issues really got in the way of fostering and having a stable relationship possibly with um, a fire sign here in the past. Crowning this reading is something that you are thinking about. We have another air sign. So this is an Aquarius, a Gemini or a Libra. And we have the Hermit, which is a Virgo. Both of these things indicate to me that you're thinking about problematic communication, possibly coming in with this Hermit card, the Virgo card, problematic communication, news that you didn't really expect, or even delays when it comes to communication. You might be like this, where you are blocking their messages, you are ghosting them, or you're not wanting to communicate with them. You don't want everything to be a big discussion. And then for others of you, you're dealing here with an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. And I feel like this is a person that is very intelligent, male or female. They're very intelligent, very inquisitive, quite, you know, um, quite curious. And so they might be digging, they might be looking at, might be stalking, they might be using knowledge in a way to like, you know, pr to, to kind of like show how much they already know about you. So I feel this situation playing out here in your romantic life where you have somebody, either a Virgo or an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra, that you are heavily thinking about, that you are really interested in, and you're trying to figure out more, or you're trying to um, have some major breakthrough when it comes to communication. The foundation of this reading is Five of Cups in the reverse, which is overcoming sadness and sorrow, moving away from past relationships where there were a lot of burdens imposed upon you. We have the strength card, and the strength is basically finding attraction, finding chemistry, feeling that attraction and that chemistry with another person. And it's linked up here with the Knight of Coins, which is an Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn, Sun, Moon, or Rising. And so... I feel like many of you left a fire sign behind or left somebody that you have children with. And then we're moving into a state where you have a lot of options coming to the table onto the table for you, but you're very particular and you, you might not have, you know, that exact person that you want. And you, we have you thinking about an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, or an earth sign, even Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. And there's newfound attraction here with an earth sign, which brings us into the future position. This is the Ten of Swords in the reverse. The Ten of Swords in the reverse is basically a situation that we thought was over, done with, we can never fix. It's making a comeback. Usually, I think of it as like exes or situations that we feel like, oh, that didn't really go well. Well, I feel like you have a second chance here. This is a do-over. This is a um, kind of like that reset button. Try again. Reset. So, and three of coins, which is building a foundation for a relationship with another person. Cooperation, communication, you know, uh, going really well, flowing really well between two people. Uh, plans for the future coming together to build something of value is what I usually see this card and as a relationship card It is very very good. Um, I feel like for some of you You might have wanted, you know, like um, You might have wanted like an open relationship like let's see uh, Each other but also see other people and then your partner might also be wanting an either you or your partner wanting an open relationship and the other party is like, no, absolutely not. Um, you know, I'm more monogamous. And I feel like because of it, I feel because of it, um, there's some type of agreement here. There's some type of consensus. And there's just, you know, you both are kind of like on the same page. So there is going to be some communication breakthrough that will allow you to get back on track on the same page with each other, okay? Um, for singles, singles, people, I feel like a lot of singles are going back to exes, trying to make amends with exes. If the ex is a fire sign, I feel like it can work. Fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, and Leo. I feel that it can work because this shows me a person that is very loving. If an ex is another sign, 
like uh, an earth sign. I feel like there's a lot of chemistry, but lack of stability in the relationship. So just, you know, keep that in mind. Be careful, okay? So, Geminis, I hope the reading has been helpful for you guys. Um, and um, I'll talk to you guys soon, okay? Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.